Welcome to Real Learning Center. Today, we will go into the beautiful world around us and explore about the colorful chemistry which exists around us. In this particular session, we chose the topic which is about matter which we see all around. When we are talking about matter around us, we start our sessions talking about why chemistry in the first session. Later on, we will be discussing about various aspects about matter like kitchen chemistry, interesting reactions, different states of matter and separation of materials in this first uh, session of matter around us. So, in today's session, let us first discuss about why chemistry. We might all be wondering what is chemistry and why we need to study chemistry and what is that we get to know when we study chemistry. When we are studying all that, let us just take one very, very simple example that we see around us almost all the time and that is the table salt that is right in front of me here. If table salt is not added into our food, our food would not taste yummy. However, do you know that actually the salt that we consume is the sodium chloride. Sodium is written as Na and Cl as chloride and therefore salt is nothing but sodium chloride. And if you just have a nice microscope to see the structure of sodium chloride, you see that it has a beautiful cube structure, okay. And you see that there is sodium, there is chlorine, all of them which are attached by some kind of bond, some kind of black color threads and that keeps the sodium chloride together. Now, when I see this sodium chloride, you know, it has made up of sodium which is actually a metal and just like any other metal, this metal is also shining, this is also lustrous and the sodium metal is so soft, you know, you can cut the sodium metal with your knife and when you have the sodium metal with you, you know, you always keep it in a kerosene bottle. If I do not keep it under kerosene bottle, then you can see that it reacts with water in the atmosphere and it can just blast. That is the reason why sodium and metals like potassium and lithium, they are all stored under kerosene. So, you might be wondering that the sodium metal is so harsh, right? However, the other element that is there in our common salt, the sodium chloride is the chlorine and you see that this chlorine which is there is also not safe. Actually speaking, it is a gas with pungent smell and this is also dangerous, it is also poisonous. Inhalation of too much of chlorine into our body might also be fatal. However, in the sodium chloride that you see here, the presence of sodium and chlorine coming close to each other, forming that bond, forming that attraction between them, changes the properties of both the sodium and chlorine. And that sodium chloride gives us wonderful taste for our food. Don't you think that this is magic? Indeed it is. And that is the magic of chemistry. Basically speaking, in chemistry, we are actually trying to find out the reasons for why the substance behave, you know, as they are. Why do, why does sodium chloride behave completely different from how the sodium is or how the chlorine is? Now, this difference is what we study in our chemistry and that is the fascinating part of chemistry. This part of the study where we try to link the behavior of the substances to the nature of the chemicals, nature of the elements, 
is what we call as the pure chemistry. Okay. Now, when we are studying about pure chemistry, we will not stop only about their behavior. Right now, you can see here that there is a small aquarium and there is a cat sitting above it. Now, would you be interested to know what would happen if sodium chloride enters into these living things? Obviously, and that part of our study is what we call as biochemistry. Biochemistry is that branch of chemistry which actually talks about the importance, the behavior, the reactions of all these chemicals inside a living system. It might be a fish, it might be a cat or it might be ourselves. Let us just take one example. Right now I have uh, two, test, uh, two beakers here filled with water. What I would do is I will put salt in one of the beakers and now if I put salt what would happen? You can see that if I taste this water, it will be salty. I am going to put one more spoon of salt in another beaker and this also would be salty. Now, if I taste both these waters, you know, I can find out that both the waters are tasting the same. Now, what I do is I am going to add one more spoon of salt into this and mix it well and now out of these two beakers that I have one has one spoon of salt the other one has two spoons of salt and if I am going to taste them obviously the first beaker which has only one spoon of salt would be salt salty the second beaker would be saltier than the first one because it has two spoons of salt. Now if I want to make them to taste the same amount of salt, what I would do is I would add some water into the beaker where there are two spoons of salt. Now this balances out the two spoons of salt, right? So now if I take any of the beakers, both the beakers would taste the same because in one of them I have added twice the water of the original one. Now this concentration of salt and water is a very, very important phenomenon and this is actually the pure chemistry, right? Now, when we are talking about biochemistry, you know, this kind of maintaining the concentration is very, very important and trivial matter. Where would you find that? Now, that is generally seen in our own body and that is actually called as blood pressure. Our blood is made up of water and it also is made up of salt. Now sometimes when the salt concentration increases, when the salt concentration increases, we see that more amount of water is coming to the blood. Okay more water is coming into the blood and this is actually going to increase the pressure on the heart. The pressure on the heart is measured as the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. Now this pressure is going to be you know changed and influenced by the amount of salt and the amount of water that is present in the blood. In fact that is the reason why People generally say that if you have hypertension or high blood pressure, you are not supposed to eat more salt because when you have more salt, there will be more water in the blood and that would pressurize our heart. Isn't this interesting? And uh, the second example that I would like to give you is about our nerve cells. The nerve cells are present in our brain. Okay, in our brain and these nerve cells are called as neurons, a very, very important organ to control and coordinate all the processes that happens in any living system. Now, you see that the neuron structure is different from any other typical cell. 
you see that it has a big body and this body tapers into a long tail and then again you see that it branches out. Now this is very helpful because the neurons are actually involved in carrying the information from the cell body to the top of the tail. So the information keeps on passing and that movement, that information is passed with the help of sodium ions. The sodium ions which are there in our nerve cells are actually very important to conduct the information, to transport the information from one neuron to other neuron. And this movement of the information is what we call as neuron firing. And this actually kind of passes information from one part of the brain to the other and when it does so, you see that the in, uh, whole body's life processes are being controlled and coordinated. And all this happens because of the neurons. Also, there is one more nice example which we can always talk about when we are talking about sodium chloride. For our muscle movement, you know, the sodium ions play a very, very important role. Whenever there is muscle movement, you see that there has to be the muscles which get contracted and relaxed. There has to be a series of contraction, relaxation, contraction and relaxation and all this happens because of the sodium ions. Now, the muscles can be voluntary muscles like the muscles which are attached to our hand or it can be involuntary muscles, the muscles which are present inside our body, say our stomach muscles, our intestinal muscles or it can even be our cardiac muscles. All these muscles are continuously moving and they bring about the movement mainly because of the movement and the influx of the sodium ions. So, here you see that using the knowledge of pure chemistry, we are going to understand some of the processes that happens in the life forms and that part of our chemistry is called as biochemistry. Now, the three examples which we spoke of is just about a 0.01% of the use of sodium ions in the body. Actually speaking, there are around 35,000 reactions happening in the body and understanding them, how they influence our life forms is what we study in biochemistry. If you see right in front of me now, I have not a fish or a cat, but I have many other chemical substances. Now, these chemical substances are something that we use almost in our day-to-day -day life. We have the soaps which we use regularly to take away dirt from our body or from the fabric and then we have the pickles which is uh, many of our favorite fruit uh, food and then uh, we have uh, the ORS juice which is the juice which is generally given for a person who feels very weak, whose electrolyte concentration has come down, who is tired you know, or is just uh, uh, getting up from the fever and then we have the nasal spray. Now you might be wondering when we are talking about sodium chloride, how does all this play a role? You know, all this plays a role because all of them in one way or the other are using up our sodium chloride. The soap that we have is actually made from vegetable oil and a compound called as the sodium hydroxide. This sodium hydroxide is made from sodium chloride. So for making soaps, we need sodium chloride. Then we have the pickle. Now pickles generally we do not make it fresh every day. We make it one day and we marinate it for few days and then we keep it throughout year. And they can stay year after year mainly because they have very high sodium chloride content. Now, this sodium chloride will actually act as 
of fungicide as a bactericide does not allow the bacteria or the fungus to grow and by chance there is a bacteria present you know it, it takes out water from the bacteria by a simple osmosis process and thus the pickle remains fresh. That is the magic of using salt in pickle along with of course giving the taste. The third one that I spoke of is the ORS. Now this ORS which is given as a electrolyte uh, juice you know in many of the times you see that this is the one very very important component to get back our body to function normally. As I told you the sodium ions in our body has lot of roles to play be it simple muscle movement, heart beating or movement of our stomach or it can be as strong as keeping our memory sane. Now to all this we need ions and ORS is the one which has good amount of sodium ions present in it. Therefore, when you are really feeling weak, you cannot feel like walking up, you drink ORS and you get all the energy needed. Now there is also one more which is the nasal spray. The nasal spray that we use is nothing but 0.9% of sodium chloride and this sodium chloride will actually decongest our nose and sinuses whenever we have a bad cold. Now this way you see that chemistry, pure chemistry, we are also using the same technology and the same knowledge to make many many new products and this making of new products is what we call as industrial chemistry. So industrial chemistry is nothing but the application of what we learnt in pure chemistry to apply so that we can make some articles out of it, some uses out of it, practical uses of all this and that is what we call as industrial chemistry. Now for majority of the things that we told now, sodium hydroxide is such an important chemical and where do we get sodium hydroxide from? Sodium hydroxide is obtained from sodium chloride. And now let us just see how we get sodium chloride. Now sodium chloride is actually used to make sodium hydroxide. And how do we make this is by a process called as the chloralkali process. In this process, there is one inlet which allows sodium chloride to enter and we see that this gets mixed with water and when we give some electricity into the tank there is formation of sodium hydroxide. Electricity helps to break down sodium chloride and water into respective ions and thus you see the formation of sodium hydroxide. The other products of this entire process is the hydrogen gas and the chlorine gas. All these three products, the sodium hydroxide, hydrogen and the chlorine gas can be collected separately and can be used for various purposes. If you just see all this, you get to know that chemistry is a very very important subject because it is useful for ourselves to understand, it is also useful to understand our nature and not only that with this knowledge we can also use it to come out with various new substances around which can use, be used for various other purposes. Now this is why we need to study chemistry. So this finishes our first session on why we need to study chemistry. In our next coming videos, we will try to explore more about the matter around us. Thank you.